Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Gray, and it's just plain living here. Isn't that good to be just plain living? Did you row in? I rowed in. I'm Peggy Burton. Yes, I did row in. <coughs> Even though I live on a hill, I have got water standing. <laughs> you have to go down low I've to got, get out yeah, of there. Yeah, I've got water standing in my yard. It's oh, a bunch me. of rain came through. Uh, is it going to end? Well, no, it's, it's going to rain for two, three more days. Oh, boo. Oh, boo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boo. What does uh, it look oh, well. like out there, Julia? Terrible. Terrible, she said. Yeah. But hey. the, the flowers will grow and the, the trees will grow, will grow and your lawn will get what higher. I guess. April showers bring May, May come flowers. Your way. Isn't that yep. what it is? It's what it is. April. A lot of things happen in April. Yeah. You know, we income tax. We had <laughs> I do that in early as I can and get it out of my house. The Celtic Festival brought in thousands of people. Oh yes. And I'm so proud of that. They they did a great job and it, I'm proud of South Jackson for bringing them there and, and them wanting to come. Yeah. And so I hope that'll become a thing that happens. All well the time. it will and you know we were we were watching of course we produce the don't produce but we show the Tullahoma City board meeting and the report from uh, from uh, I forget who it was, uh, maybe Derek Mann or maybe uh, Jason Quick, that it was a huge success, and they were walking around, and and probably 50 percent of the people there weren't from here. Oh, I know. That, you're so right. that is that's wonderful. That's a wonderful thing to do, and there are a lot of people with Scottish and Irish heritage that are in this region. Well, and what I thought was pretty cool is they had tents, different tents set up where the clans were all represented. Right. Where you could go and, and find out, like, if you are or you think you are of that descent, you can find out uh, the history of, of the name and what tartan they wear. There was a tartan there that I had not seen before, which was almost a bright canary yellow. Oh. And it was just beautiful. I'll bet it was. It was just beautiful. So, and, and so many, and I have some video of this. Uh, uh, I apologize for that because the camera that I use sometimes, it's hard when there's sun to see in the right. screen. So you can't tell really you what you're videoing. can't tell what you're seeing, I know. You know. So CJ, look at there. There's the moon right there. Oh. Is moon it? in the sun. Is this part of the eclipse? Look at that. That's part of the eclipse That's right there. That's beautiful, yeah. And that, that happened yesterday. It happened yesterday, and my niece, who lives on the lake, watched the whole entire thing, and it was very clear wonderful, over there. Wonderful, Yeah. It just got dusky at my house. So it's going to happen again in the United States. It happens every 18 months, but it's not going to happen here again until 44. I guess I'll be... We'll, we'll both Somewhere be gone else. by then. <laughs> yeah. We'll be watching it from above. Uh, right. <laughs> Might be riding the moon. Who knows? <clears throat> uh, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot of things going on. Springtime and is here, and and uh, I think the prom was this past weekend. So there was, was all kinds yeah. of pretty little girls and boys prancing dressed around. up, prancing around like like little ponies. I know. I know. <laughs> Fun time. And I don't, I'm not sure when school is out, but I guess it's not too far away. Well, school usually gets out sometime in the, around in the middle May. or latter part of May. Yeah. You know, and we, used, we used to go all the way into June going to school. I know, and we would hardly ever got out. It no, seemed like we, I was yeah. trapped in the school. But then, when, but then we had three months of summer. We had three months of summer. and it, Which last, I, seems like it lasted forever. It seemed like it lasted forever. In the country where I was... Uh, there was always a fall break for farmers, if I'm not yes, mistaken. I think that so. was many, many years ago. When it's harvest time. Yeah. And, uh, and in Shelbyville, they used to let the kids out of school when... Uh, horse show. Horse show to work. Yeah, that, that was important. Oh, it's, it's yeah. hugely important. And uh, it's important for the kids to learn to work and... You know, for the... Well, and the horse I love the horse show. I love the Economic income. Economic, absolutely. Uh, Shevable the effect is, is, of that. Shevable is growing by leaps and bounds right now. Well, everything's I think, yeah. growing by leaps and bounds around yeah. here. Yeah, it's a 
We got to make sure we get our share. That's the that's the issue. I know, and I'm proud that we have so much going on here that it does bring people from other counties and other states. Other and states, yeah, that's, uh, sure. That's pretty amazing. So, uh, and and today I, I will bring a, about this sad point. Today is the service for my friend and our Coffee County Mayor who passed away last last week, uh, Judd Matheny, in oh, the my, yes. Kilgore Funeral Home. The visitation is from two to six, and then the the service will be at six, and I'm sure it will be packed. That's very sad. And uh, another person that has recently passed is Valerie Lawrence. You know, she's been on our show Dance, with her ballroom dancing. When Fran told me that, I thought, how can that woman in that kind of shape I know. pass away? But it's she had other circumstances. It's very sad. It, her funeral is Saturday in Winchester. Right now, I can't call the funeral home, but uh, Valerie was a wonderful person and oh, yeah. a beautiful dancer. Yes, she was. So she's now dancing with the stars. Dancing with the stars. <laughs> hey, that's a movie show. That's a TV show, isn't it? Yeah. Dancing with the stars. Uh, that Valerie was a beautiful person. Yes, she was that. She was that. And Judd Matheny, I mean, I'm just in shock over Judd. Still, I yeah, I mean, 53 years old, so that's that's pretty young. That's very young. For that to happen. Uh, but you never know. Hey, you're never you're never promised anything but the breath you're breathing right now. Exactly. That's it. So, uh, moving, hey, I got I got, I got a, a couple of song lyrics I want to read this morning, just because I want to. Did you write them? Well, of course. Okay. Why would I read somebody else's stuff? <laughs> although, although I'm reading, and I said something about this. I'm reading. I just finished the book, uh, John Meacham's Soul of America. That's which a is book. a book that everybody, every household needs to have that book in it. So and it's America. about it's about government and and the people and, and it's about the presidents and what they have to go through and it's about politics and the United States of America is a republic and it is never should have even happened that it got created. But it did. It did, right. And we fight, we fight through it all the time. And the thing that's so good about this book is it, it explains which president and, and all the stuff that went on during their uh, their time. And and you know, some of them they said it says in there, you know, there's not all politicians are not all good or all bad. They all do stupid stuff. One day they speak speak eloquently and the next day they're tongue tied. Right. They make a decision that's right, they make a decision that's wrong. And they gotta live with it. But 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 we the people, no matter how bad the mistakes are, even through McCarthyism and some of that stuff that took place, we survived. We came out on the other end and we came out smarter and better. I hope so. You know, uh, yeah. and so you know, this this song right this song right here is a call. I need some good news, bad. Hell, I've worked all my life, two or three jobs at a time. I want the best for my family and me, but I always seem behind. I hate the phone and the U.S. mail. All they bring is pain. My work is gone. My credit sucks, and they won't let me explain. I need some good news, bad. I just need a break. I need some good news bad. I don't know how much more I can take. Loyalty for working guys like me, it died with my dad. Lord, if I'm gonna make it, I need some good news bad. What do you do when it's not about you but the times you're going through? Big boss man's vacationing again, but he left a pink slip for you. This country's built on God, on, in God we trust, but we've trusted a bunch of jerks. So send them back home where they belong and put me back to work. I need some good news bad. I just need a break. I need some good news bad. I don't know how much more I can take. Loyalty for working guys like me. Well, it died with my dad. Lord, if I'm going to make it, I need some good news bad. All I want is a hard day's work and the respect you gave my dad. Come on, USA, find a way. We need some good news bad. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do need some good news. 
And maybe, maybe it's coming. Well, you know, it, it, it <coughs> does come. It does come. And if you wait, and there was one of the statement because Meacham takes people that we know and respect, and one of them was Eleanor Roosevelt, who was I respected and, and sure. was a very respected lady. And one of the, th the things she said is not all politicians are good and not all politicians are bad. Sometimes they're good and then two weeks later they're bad. You're right. You know, and she said, don't, don't just listen to the people that are like you. Go in the other camp. And listen and to the listen other to side. And listen to what those other people say, because even though you oppose them, every now and then the person you oppose has a really good idea. That's true. And you need to be smart enough to accept yeah. it and, glean and what support you can. it instead of being a jerk just because they're wearing a different color tie. Exactly. You know? So, uh, both sides. Both sides. Yeah, and that's why we're here because we've got both sides and we fight over this and fight over that. But in the end, we're still here and the only country like it in the world with that type of government. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is just as good an old country song as you can ever hear. I was riding down the road one day, and that's when I was traveling, and I heard this song, and I thought, damn, that's the same old song. I've heard it before. Every, they all sound the same, and I thought, hmm. I think it was not Gladys Knight and the Pips, but one of those Motown, it's the same old song. You know, and so this is the one that I wrote. It's been, it's been recorded by... I think three guys. It's the same. This is the way I sent it to Garth. Oh, okay. Acapella. It's the same old song. I've heard it before. Lots of cheating, lots of lying, lots of slamming of doors. But this time, it's my time to sing right along to the same old story, same old song. I never listened, never paid it no mind. Just a song on the jukebox, that old tear-jerking kind. The words had no meaning when she was around. But now it's so lonely when I hear the sound of words on the jukebox, just rhythm and rhyme. It's the same old song, but this time it's mine. Who wrote the music? Who knew what to say? Did he lose someone in the same way? Or is it a story as old as time? Man loses woman, then he loses his mind. And he sits in the shadows knowing she's gone. It's the same old story. The same old song. Yes, he sits in the shadows knowing she's gone. It's the same old story. It's the same old song. <laughs> if that ain't country, nothing is. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Never gonna let 
For many senior citizens, life looks like this, but it doesn't have to. When you make your home at Parkview Senior Living, life after retirement takes on a whole new meaning. Daily exercise options, fun outings, happy hour, game nights, movies and popcorn, arts and crafts, enjoying friends over chef-prepared meals. Parkview Senior Living, where you're always home, but you're never home alone. He's a little bit of you, he's a little bit of me. He's the trash along the roads out of Tennessee. He's the garbage that we find. He's the dream we left behind. Lord, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. A throwaway bottle or pop top can may not seem much to a traveling man, but a little bit of litter goes along. Met the enemy, and he is us. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. I was skeptical about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There are a lot of opinions being shared. But I had the chance to talk with my doctor about my concerns. He told me the vaccines are backed by decades of research, and that the vaccines are proven safe and effective. Now I'm protected and ready to put this pandemic behind us. Join the millions of Tennesseans who have decided to give COVID-19 vaccines a shot. Visit covid19.tn.gov to find an appointment today. Second graders, every Monday at East Lincoln School, those... Seventy-nine, I think they started the luncheon. And it's going on this Friday. Friday. The date, I'm not sure. The twelfth. The twelfth of April. So, it, uh, tell us a little bit about the menu and how you get there and what. Well, the horse play luncheon is our major fundraiser for the year, so we always get a great support from Tullahoma and the surrounding counties, which we're a therapeutic riding for children with disabilities. And Either. the beauty of that is the children don't pay. No, the families don't pay. It's all donations. It's all donations. It takes a lot of money. So This year our meals are $15. And if you order five, we will deliver. Oh, wow. So otherwise it's pick up at Grace Baptist out on Avaca from 11 to 1.30. Grace Baptist is very generous in allowing you all to yes. use their kitchen. and their, It's a great place. To go and agree up. so where, what do you do how do you get it how do you order it you okay know? well the menu this year uh, again is turkey hams oh. is that mine oh, sorry about this okay i'm going to have to go ahead you've got a mic. the menu is she very wasn't. similar to previous years turkey ham stuffing mashed potatoes mac and cheese green beans roll and dessert like I said, it's gone up a little bit because the price is for everything. $15 each. It's curbside pickup or delivery if you order more than five meals. That's a wonderful deal. You order through Top Rehab, and the number is 931-455-5189. Uh, did they leave that up long enough to order? Or you could go on Horseplay's website probably yes. and get the information in case you, there you go, there's the phone number. If you write a check, write it to Horseplay, 
you can drop it off at Top Rehab or bring it when you pick up the meals. And for people that don't know where Top Rehab is, where is that? Oh, it's on 2110 North Jackson Street, Tullahoma. I think we need to let people know how important the money is here because uh, we you have started a lot of this. costs. The horses, the vet bills, the feed, the hay, uh, clean up, the saddles, mowing, the tack, and we will take material donations as well as monetary. Good. So, so if they have used horse equipment that they are trying to find a place to put it, send it to us. Good. Uh, there's always a place for more things. Yes, and I wouldn't even dare guess what it costs to keep them all fed. I know you do hay and we, stuff, but you do other stuff, don't you? We have you? different levels of donations. We estimate about $1,000 a year per horse. And do you have some big donors for this event Saturday? We normally have some folks that do provide generously, but the meal sales is the primary reason that we continue to work. Sure. The meal. So th this is an important event, and it starts at what time? Pick up at 11 to 1.30. 11 to 1.30. Or can you actually go there and eat, or is it all pick up? It's all pick up. Okay. I know. seems like there was a time when you could We used go. to do that, but with COVID, that killed that, it, and we just haven't reestablished an in-place eat. So I love the idea of if you get five meals, it's how much? Well, it would be 15 times five. Was but I, I thought there was one where there was a... Well, a, they used to, but we didn't do that Oh, you didn't year. do that this year. Well, that's okay. $15 a meal is wonderful with all this stuff you have on it. Yes, ma'am. Is it still turkey? Is turkey still Turkey, involved? ham, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green beans. Yeah, we... The Good whole old home-cooked country yes, meal. You can I can almost smell it now. <laughs> yes, no, my mouth waters. I know. It's a great, great opportunity to help support an organization that does so much for handicapped children. Mm -hmm. I think the first time I went by horseplay and, and watched some children ride, it touched my heart and made me cry to see a child pulled from his wheelchair and see the look on his face when he gets up on that horse and he's got legs and he can move. Some of them are that a little anxious, but putting them on, they, they're nervous. That after the session, they don't want to leave. And, and for a moment in time, they have a sense of freedom that they have not had for mm -hmm. a long time. Yes, ma'am. It develops their confidence and their core strength muscles. Absolutely. So there's physical as well as mental How many benefit. do you all service? How many children? Do you know? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't have that number, but we have two sessions right now going on a Monday night and a Friday night. Oh, that's good. And we usually have two sessions per night and four per night, so we're servicing 16 kids right now. 16 kids. If they all come, sometimes and they can't people come. People that, what is the age limit? I've forgotten. Well, is, I'm not sure early on, but we've got some youngsters up to 18. I then, think up to 18. Uh, yes, ma'am. And uh, I think you're always looking for volunteers. Always looking for volunteers. And if you have a child that could benefit from this organization, call Top Rehab and talk to Lisa. Okay, call Top Rehab and get information yes. concerning how you can use this and how valuable it is. And uh, it's Top Rehab, is that where you go yes. get your tickets to? Yes. Yes, right. So that's nice of them to do that. Yes. And that, they're one Lisa of your sponsors, Lisa has been a past I president assume. and she yeah. still supports the program. You have some wonderful people involved. I know Loretta Christian has worked she would have been here, but she had. She's recovering from knee surgery. I know, and but she loves horseplay, and we'll just say hello to Loretta. Good today. <laughs> yeah. She'll be watching tonight when this is aired. And your children. You said when you started this, your children loved horses. Yes. And they weren't handicapped. No, ma'am. They were volunteers. But they just loved horses, and I bet they helped with the organization. I still have organization. one that helps. She's a, gonna be. 17 in July, Jeepers. It happens fast. You blink and there they go. They're four girls. You had four girls? Yes, ma'am. That's fabulous. 
you and five women living in the same house. Well, I usually tease and say I was awash in a sea of estrogen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. All right, let's re-remind people of the value of this luncheon that goes on Saturday. All the food. Friday. I mean, Friday. I keep wanting to call everything Saturday. Fr Friday, while you're, a lot of people go during work, their right. lunch break, and grab food. Or we can bring it to them if they order five. That's what I was trying to remember. If you order five, you'll bring it to their house. How far out does that reach? Well, we delivered to... Manchester, of course, Lynchburg, probably Winchester. That's so, awesome. So any of those local, we serve all five of the local counties, the counties. for kids to come for therapy. Uh, children with uh, different kinds of handicaps, I, I know, mm -hmm. it's, I don't, can't name them all, but I know that if they're in a wheelchair or if they're, Handicapped in any way, from ADHD, does that count? Sure. And uh, our medical, autism and our medical staff not will just not just physical disabilities, Correct. but yes. uh, in this day and time, there's so many challenges. And we see great advantage to have the child participate. Oh, I'm sure you do. Uh, are you still going to have your little prince and princess? I know you did that last year. Well, I, I believe that's an ongoing. That may be an ongoing thing. And uh, I, the cutest thing I've ever seen is when these children are on a horse. I just can't get over it. It's the most, it's just the most awesome feeling to know that as, how much they're getting they from riding horses. Yeah. And get older, we have the ability to have a trail ride on the property. Oh, that's fun. So the kids actually lead lead the horse and or ride uh, yeah, the horse. I was going to ask that. Some parents worry about uh, is it safe, but I think you have someone leading the horses when the children ride. Is that correct? We have sidewalkers and a leader, so there's three adults. Three adults. Or youth that uh, are old yeah. enough and have been trained to be a, aware of the child's situation and if necessary are there to catch them. But as far as I know, we haven't had anybody have trouble it, everything, everything is safe, and uh, yes, are y'all still selling bricks? Yes, we have memorial bricks going into our patio, memory patio, and we just put a tree in in memory of Joanne Holcomb. Oh wow! She was a major supporter and passed away recent, well within the last year. Are the bricks all down now? No, we have space for more. So if you okay. would like to do a memory brick. We have a process. You can ask us. I'm not sure who's running that right now, but go to our website. Go to the website, and you'll find out. I, Horse Play Incorporated. I know I have my daughter has. I get. I got a brick for her, and uh, my son-in-law, her husband, recently passed away, and he wanted any any money anybody had to spend on a funeral. He wanted it to go to Horse Play. Awesome. They both love love animals and love what horseplay does. We are a 501c3, so all of donations, whether monetary or material, are tax deductible. And it's a wonderful thing, and uh, people all need need a few tax deductions. But the right. value it is to people and the children that it's that's awesome. what touches me. It really does. Anybody that's interested in our program, please come out and visit Monday night or Friday. What time does that start? I don't have that memory. Oh, okay. But, but call Top Rehab and they can tell them. But that's when you're having the classes and right. the children and are observe. riding and you can observe and watch the children. And see if they want to volunteer to do that. And I, I know there's probably a lot of people out there that <clears throat> have children that would benefit from this. So bring your children out and let them watch for a while and sure. they'll get excited about it's, it, I oh, think. Yeah. And we, we normally have a waiting list, but get on the list and you'll get there. Have you still got your cats? Yes. <laughs> there was a bunch of little old cats out there the last time I was there, and I guess by now they're great long cats. We got two but, black ones that are on the property that help us with mice. Yeah, and they, they do the job. Yes, ma'am. Well, 
I'm, I think we've said it all, so I encourage everybody to uh, buy tickets, or I don't guess you have to have a ticket, you just make an order. Right. And uh, $15 for a fabulous meal, I think that includes dessert. Yes. Thank you for coming, PJ. Thank Great you. Great to have you. Yes, ma'am. We'll be back. What would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what? I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm -hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Nice to see you. Thank you, John, for that introduction. Thank you, camera lady, camera gentleman, for putting a good, sharp, crisp, colorful, contrasty picture on the screen for your enjoyment. Um, you know, our predecessor there, Mr. Jerry Walden, was speaking of the trees and the problem. I remember back in the late 30s or 40s, there elm trees so beautiful that had a, a blight all over the state. We lost some beautiful elm trees there for a few years and then uh, this uh, latest thing the pine beetle that's been given a problem we lost a pine in our yard but we rather think it was lightning rather than a pine beetle but uh, evergreens are so beautiful anyway but uh, Tullahoma has been blessed with having so many beautiful trees you remember years ago when on North Jackson Street when there's so so many beautiful oak trees from one end of the See the other that came, came right by the curbs and made a arch way uh, on Jackson Street for many years. Beautiful trees. Well, that's not my subject for today, but I've got a subject that I think everybody uh, will enjoy and uh, remember real well, and that is ice cream. Why did I ever think of ice cream? Well, somebody asked me not long ago, said, wasn't it an ice cream factory in Tullahoma? I said, yes. Um, Banner Ice Cream Company uh, was the only ice cream manufacturing company between Niceville and Chattanooga. And it was located in the 100 block of North Jackson Street, uh, which is now, I think, a uh, maybe an insurance or a loan office building right behind Garland Honeycutt's investment firm on Lincoln Street. Uh, after the end of the Banner Ice Cream Company, that building was used in the uh, 40s for a fine restaurant called the Jackson Street Grill. And um, uh, it was very, very uh, elegant uh, during Camp Forest in Tullahoma. Then after the war was over and it, it was shut down, the um, building was used for an auto parts agency. Bill York had an auto parts company there for many years. But back on the subject of ice cream, Mr. Watt Beatty lived on North Jackson Street and his wife operated uh, that ice cream manufacturing plant for many years. I think they just made one, uh, probably one flavor, which was vanilla, and it was really good. And, um, you know, uh, uh, ice cream is probably the most favorite dessert of all time. Everybody likes ice cream. What's that uh, tale that says, ice, 
uh, you scream, I scream, we all scream for ice cream, which is a, a good policy, and that was one of the only things I remember in grade school and high school that uh, the cafeteria made available uh, to the students for dessert was little Dixie cups of ice cream. But anyway, uh, uh, one of the first, back in the uh, middle to late 30s, there was an ice cream store that opened on um, West Lincoln Street where Domino's Pizza is today, uh, and it was called the Bluebird Ice Cream Store, and they had 21 different flavors, and boy, it was good. They were busy all the time, especially in the afternoon or after a movie at night. That place would be just packed, and they had all flavors that you could imagine, and uh, fudge and uh, Neapolitan, which is uh, strawberry and vanilla and chocolate, and had uh, uh, exotic flavors that they would uh, mix, or they would mix them. If you want an ice cream cone with three dips, you could get uh, one or two or three different flavors. And then uh, in recent years, not too long ago, Kay's ice cream uh, was located at the corner of East Grundy and Washington Street. Uh, for a number of years. Had a lot of different flavors there. And then, of course, the candy kitchen for so, so many years had the soda fountain there uh, on um, uh, North Atlantic Street. The Tennessee Shoe Repair occupies that building now. But then there was Taylor's Pharmacy and a telehome and drug, independent drugs that all had soda fountains and uh, ice cream, all dipped ice cream at that time. And uh, in the late 30s, when frozen food became available. My grandfather had a grocery store, had the first frozen food in Tullahoma, and it was bird's eye. It was strawberries and corn. But uh, anyway, uh, ice cream has been a real important part of our lives, and now you can get get it anywhere, frozen or otherwise, in all kinds of varieties, Byers and Mayfield and Purity and Seal Test, all fine uh, flavors, well well made, well deserved, well flavored, and ice cream is a part of everybody's life. And of course, uh, there's even sherbets. Remember sherbets? But now, let me t finish by saying, uh, eat some ice cream every day, and it'll it'll uh, even make you feel good. You get uh, your cholesterol down and your uh, strength up by eating a lot of real good ice cream. And we hope you enjoy uh, eating it and. Uh, uh, the all different flavors, and, and again, this is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come. We thank you for watching, and we hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful day. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. 
It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Come on. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. <clears throat> and I'm proud to have my friend and a friend of Tullahoma, uh, one of our one of our business people and investors in this town, Mr. Joe Orr. And the reason I have Joe on today is I wanted to get a real estate person's perspective on what's going on in Tullahoma and what's getting ready to happen in Tullahoma. And yet, you know, we have a, our planning commission meetings and our board meetings and there's a lot of chatter about we do need this, we don't need that. We've got a bunch of people headed this way. That's correct. By the money that the federal government's spending and the money that the state's spending over in Manchester. And, you know, the train's coming and we need to be ready. And I wanted Joe to bring some statistics about what's happening in Tullahoma versus what's happening in Manchester, what's happening in Winchester. And it's shocking what we don't have. Sure. In Tullahoma. <clears throat> so, Joe, the floor is pretty much yours. Uh, and uh, you just tell us what, what you think is going to happen and what we need to do to be ready. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you for having me, John. Yeah. All right. I uh, pulled up some stats. And one of the things that um, uh, we're lacking in Tullahoma more than anything is availability of residential lots. Uh, right now, we, you and I talked the other day, and I said there's only five residential That's lots. Five, five, yeah, <laughs> five residential lots on the market that are just traditional lots inside the city limits. And since we talked, now there's only three because two of them went under contract last <laughs> night. So, so now but, there's three. <laughs> so we just don't have much inventory of, of uh, lots inside the city. When you get outside the city, we pick up a few extra ones. Still, very, very, very short of lots. Uh, the good news is that um, we've got several developments underway and there's, uh, that, that's going to make a tremendous difference. And you and I were talking earlier about what was going on in the 90s and maybe 2000. Um, we had a lot of developments in Tullahoma that um, uh, were popping and we had a lot of builders building houses. You were building houses. We had uh, all the Lawson's building houses and Thomas building houses and a lot of the local guys building houses. Right. <clears throat> you know, uh, spec houses and customs too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the developments that were really popping, we had Fairways, we had Macon Manor, uh, Colonial Acres, Terra Estates, Brookfield, Blanton Wood. Uh, just things were going Court on. Courtside. Courtside, yep, exactly. And uh, the Settlers. Uh, Setters, Setters Point. Right. So uh, all those were going on and we had activity coming and a lot of people moved to Tullahoma because they wanted to live in those developments and they wanted to live in those beautiful homes that our local contractors right. were building. Right. And that was a real plus and uh, I, I looked at some stats of consumer sentiment at that time our consumer confidence was at an all time high. That was in 2000. <clears throat> it was at a 111 which is over the top. Normally, 100 is really good consumer sentiment or su consumer confidence, and things were really moving. And interest rates at that time were still in the sevens. Right. So, you know, things can happen with rates in the sevens, which is where they are today. Right. They're in the sevens range. We're anticipating things to come down. Actually, you still get loans for in the, in the six range, six to seven. And <clears throat> we are anticipating a drop, and that will help. We got spoiled. When rates got down to 3%. Well, yeah, heavens <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we got spoiled. It's taken a little while to readjust. But, uh, but things, people are actually accepting 
that the rates are just going to be a little higher than they have been. Well, there, yeah, it's going to be because when you look throughout history, I mean, it, it, it's not always been three. No, no. Two. It, it just never. I think that we used to chuckle about old FHA loans that were four and a half. That's the cheapest we had ever seen before right, back right. in the, probably in the 50s and 60s. I mean, that's that far along. And then all of a sudden we saw them go down to under three. And that was un, that was well. And when that, when that happens, the guy who puts money in the bank is not getting but one and a half or at, two at best. And so they're not putting money in the bank. They're using uh, they're they using that money to do other things. Sure, sure, that's true. So uh, <clears throat> that's our situation on lots. Uh, now the the good news is, uh, well, let's we'll talk about lots. We've got a lot of developments that are in the hopper right now that's uh, coming down the pike and that's very encouraging. We needed it bad. Do you do you know <laughs> approximately how many lots that might be? We've got probably uh, approximately 1,200 lots that within the next two to three years that will be developed. Okay. Now, some of those deals may fall apart, may fall apart but right now they look promising. Right. So uh, uh, if you'd like, I can talk to you a little bit about those that are coming up. Sure. All right. Good. <clears throat> because, but but one of the things I want, I want before we do that, one of the things I want people to realize is when someone has a telehoma address mm -hmm. and they live in the county, they're not paying city taxes. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people are talking about my taxes are going to go up with all of these people coming in here and new schools and fire halls and roads and sewage and all of that. A lot of those expenses are going to happen anyway. Sure. Gas is going to go up. Employment's going to go up. The only way that your taxes are going to extremely go up if it's if there is no development. Exactly. Yeah. inside the city because right. you need those other properties to help prop up you sure. Sure. and the people that are paying taxes. Right. So we've got to have a certain amount of development to just stay even keel, right? A trick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we're, now. And we're, we're not keeping up. You got three lots, <coughs> folks, right, right now. Three. Yeah. So we're not keeping up with where we need to be as far as development goes. Right. You know, so we've been... Uh, way underperforming in development for the last 10 years or longer. Right. So we've got some catching up to do. So there's plenty of demand and very little supply. So we needed some new developments to come on board and, and that's happening finally. But it's, we're, we're, we got to catch up. And just to kind of give a comparison, you know, Tullahoma's population is 20,000, we'll just round them off 20,000. Manchester's 12, Winchester's nine. There's almost, well, there's more homes for sale in the Winchester address than there are in Tullahoma. And there's almost as many sales that have occurred in the first quarter this year in Manchester, which is almost half the size of Tullahoma, as have sold in Tullahoma, residential sales. So Winchester, <clears throat> with 9,000 people, has sold more homes. No, they have more availability. More availability. Yeah. Right, right. They had 113. Than Tullahoma does. Yeah. They have 113 active residential listings. Tullahoma has we got about three. 92. <laughs> Resident, residential. <laughs> yeah, three <laughs> lots. Residential, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're behind uh, the curve. But things are looking promising. The ones that are uh, on the, uh, uh, the board to get uh, developed, and a couple of them have actually uh, pretty far along. Uh, the Pines is a beautiful new development that the Hart and Family Partnership is doing right. out on uh, Country Club Drive, 95 lots. So uh, that's beautiful development. Some of them are back up to Lake Tullahoma. Uh, we've got Stillwater which not much been said about that, but it's, uh, they, they're moving dirt right now out on Wilson Avenue. Uh, Craig Brock's involved with that, and that's going to be 62 lots. Residential. Right-hand right side of the road mm -hmm. going on the Lynchburg Highway? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Going to be a residential development. So is that behind the, the, the houses that are on the old Shelbyville Highway? It doesn't go all the way through. Well, it would be behind it there, I believe. Yeah, there's a, be. I know there's some <clears throat> nice houses mm -hmm. yeah. next and to the barn right. out right. there. Sure, yeah. Somewhere then, so there's some open space behind some, those houses. I think a little further out okay. than that. 
And then uh, we have uh, Sagefield, which is a new development that's been approved. Uh, hasn't, they haven't uh, broke ground yet, but that is in between Blanton Wood and Brookfield, which is uh, uh, right off Short Springs Road. Beautiful right. track of ground. That'll be about 99 lots. Uh, then um, there's um, uh, Legacy uh, Reserve. Road, and it's right across from the airport, um, and it's uh, go, it's uh, pretty well done. Uh, they've uh, been moving a lot of dirt, putting roads in. About 35 acre tracks, going to be 62 residential sites and 62 townhome sites that will be uh, developed, and it's uh, well underway. Uh, now that doesn't have anything to do with this other PUD thing. Jackson, which is the other one, it's going to be over 700. It's a mixed use right. development. Uh, that uh, the lever mill is close to that on the back side, but it doesn't touch it, I don't believe. So uh, that mixed use is going to be commercial apartments, townhouses, and single family homes. And some retail. And right, right. Sure, yeah. So, so that's a huge development there. Yes. That one. You know, it's, it's, my understanding it's been approved, but I don't think they've broken ground yet right, on that. Right, right. Um, then uh, there's uh, the Woodlands, uh, be 40 lots on Ryder Creek and the Boca Road that Allen Howard's developing. And uh, actually, Allen is doing the Sage Field, and Allen's uh, doing the uh, Legacy Reserves there off of uh, Lefferton Mill. So he's been uh, a great. Um, uh, developer coming right, into our right, area right. and doing developments when the others weren't. So, and, and uh, so but he's not really a foreigner. He's he's he, Manchester. He, he's a local guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. So, and uh, then also he developed Coppers Creek, uh, which uh, has changed hands and it's going to be built out. It's just outside the city. Right. And, out, uh, yeah, and it's going to be about four near Boca lots. Lake out there. Boca, it's on the Boca Lake Road. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Beautiful development. So. Uh, uh, so there's several developments that's coming down the pike. Some of them are two years out, but uh, several of them's going to be you know, within the next 12 months. So, so that's encouraging. So in so in in all of those developments, <coughs> there uh, I didn't hear you say. And the one thing that Mike Dent, who was the guy from the Air Force, who's hiring right. all these people sure. that are coming to town, is affordable housing for young people. Do we have anything in that bailiwick right there? Uh, that's debatable. It's, it's really your average sale price right now is running about $300,000 in our area. So it's, But a young engineer coming out of college can't buy a $300,000 house. If rates come back down, they can. But, <laughs> <laughs> if rates come, uh, but so I mean, bring them down. How, many, how many units of apartments or condos is there out there on the, on the highway, Chevrolet Highway? I don't have that number okay. as far as the apartments. But there, there is some that will be That would be, a, you know, for these new engineers, that would probably be a, yeah. a viable a source for yeah, them to live. and so. another thing he was talking about, you and I were talking about the other day, is uh, child care. These young mothers and uh, come into town, and they're living in Murfreesboro, and their ch children are in Murfreesboro. Right. And they, they, if something happens, they worried about their kids hour, forty five minutes away from. Sure. Sure. So we need also some other things like that that needs right. to happen in Tullahoma Certainly. to support their lifestyle. Yeah, I think the townhouses would probably be the more affordable uh, right, right. Uh, opportunity. Now, uh, one more question before we go, because I don't even know who the property belongs to, but every time I go, which I'll go to uh, Gilmore Funeral Home, not Gilmore. Uh, Kim, uh, Kil Kilgore. Kilgore. Yeah, here we go. Kilgore Funeral Home <clears throat> this afternoon for Judd Matheny's services. That piece of property right there, Big piece of property. Right. I mean, to me, if you're going to put in apartment complexes and stuff <clears throat> for people working at Arnold Center, sure. is is that not a perfect I'd place be, to do be, something? It'd be ideal. Yeah. I'm sure all Who utilities owns that are property? Property. I think the Hart and Family's partnership okay. owns that. I think. Okay. I'm not sure about that, but I think they do. 
Well, Joe, I'll tell you what, we're getting a, we're getting a smile over there and says uh -oh. we need to go on. <laughs> you know, I'm really glad that you came because right. you shared a lot of good information with our with our citizens here. And maybe <clears throat> everybody will sort of realize that that this whole explosion of population and money mm -hmm. is coming to Telehome. It is. And we as as the people, not we. But, but the citizens and the government need to have a handle on how we're going to take care of it. Certainly, certainly. And you've helped share some of the things that I think our population, our citizens need to know about how behind the eight ball we are Oh, we right were. Now. Yeah, we're catching up. So keep doing the good work you yeah. do and uh, keep us posted from time yeah. to time about what's going on, okay? Let me make one more little okay. plug. Okay. Yeah. I hear some people say we're waiting for the prices to come down on real estate. That doesn't work out too well. There's only been two times in the history that prices in real estate in our area have, uh, maybe even countrywide, uh, have had any substantial decrease. And that was during the Great Depression and the uh, 2008 finance debacle. It was only two times, and they didn't last a terrible long time before they started coming back. So waiting is not the answer. Waiting on interest rates to come down doesn't work out as well either. So the best thing to do is as soon as you can, try to get your feet in the water. <laughs> jump <laughs> in the pool, jump folks. In the, pool the water's fine. Buy you some real estate because it appreciates at a really good rate, and it's a great investment, especially in our area. We're expecting great things to happen in Middle Tennessee. There's no reason for it not to. So we're expecting really good growth in our uh, real estate industry. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Yes, sir. Thank Appreciate you for having you, me. buddy. All right. We'll be back after these messages. Hi, my name is Ringo. Here at Barkview Senior Living, they're human friendly. That's why I love it here, and so does my senior human. When they want a bite, they get chef-prepared meals, and so do I. Movies in the theater, day trips, walks on the trail, and other senior humans to play with. The grass and the grounds are exquisite. It's everything my human needs to be healthy and active. Bark View. <clears throat> A Park View Senior Living. For your dog's best friend, you. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is me? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, you, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you got to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? Visit TalkAboutVaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. We teach Parkinson's patients how to move big and not let the Parkinson's slow them down. I've had patients I've treated in-house that could not even stand up, could not roll over in the bed, left the facility walking with a walker, have come back to us an outpatient and continued their big program and are now completely you know, handling life. The success of the program is just phenomenal. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what, I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm -hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, Drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop with Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration, your number one hometown HVAC company. We offer dependable and reliable service on all your HVAC equipment. We also offer high efficiency trained cooling units. Call us for your cooling needs. Your comfort is what we do. It's coming. Yeah.
you know, ladies and gentlemen, for years, every year one of the funnest things to do is go to piping on the green at the Celtic Cup put together by the Scottish, uh, local Scottish society. And it got so big that everybody that wanted to be participating in that come to it, even all the vendors who wanted to be there couldn't be there because it just outgrew the property at Celtic Cup. So South Jackson and the folks at Celtic Cup got together and decided to have that event at South Jackson Civic Center. And this Saturday, this past Saturday, it was there. And I went out there and I want to apologize right now for the video because the camera I was using, the sun was on that little screen. And a lot of times I couldn't see what I was trying to trying to video. So CJ is, is uh, done the best he can with it. But let's go to piping on the green. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is piping on the green at South Jackson Civic Center put on by the Scottish Society. And it has moved from the Celtic Cup down to South Jackson because of a lack of room and the place is packed in. A good looking bunch of folks here will go over and check out piping on the green 2024. Talk about colorful. Look at it colorful here, huh? Isn't this something? All the different tilts and all the different music. People, people everywhere taking advantage of piping on the green and the great grounds of South Jackson Civic Center has just made it to where it's so much room and, and people can get around together. To the this is the official stage right here. You know, there's clan, different clans here today that there have been in the past. It's going to be fun. Everybody's having a good time at uh, Piping on the Green. Well, there's a familiar face. If It wouldn't be Piping on the Green without Tom Bentley. Oh, <laughs> uh, here's a tent right here. Look here. Speaking of Celtic Cup, look right there. Good day, dear. How are you? Lot of goods today. Isn't it wonderful? There's so much space for everyone and, and everybody can come and show their wares and it's a gorgeous day. Thank you so much for what you do. And this is the Celtic Cup booth and there's all kinds of wonderful, oh I love these books right here. I have several of them that I write in. This is a great gift for a writer right here and all kinds of the food products that go along and, and the hats and the belts and the fun things that, that go along with the Scottish society. Leather goods, I love leather goods. Look at this, isn't this great? Look at that smile back there. I bet that's the leather man right there. You got it, beautiful stuff. And piping on the green. A lot of bead work here, that's pretty. Great artistry here. And more leather goods. We love leather. Leather is wonderful. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I love animals. They make me happy as well. Moo. Now, if that's not a beautiful face, I've never seen one. Look at the sunshine off of that face. Makes me smile. Good work. Amazing woodwork. There's always good woodwork at the Celtic Cup and at the Piping on the Green. Isn't that something? Pottery. Pottery is something I love. And some of this is just absolutely wonderful. Isn't that beautiful stuff? I love that right there.
It's okay. What can I drive into Gently rise, softly calm. Good night and joy to you all. Fall in comrades, an air I have. Beside so far, my going away. All the sweethearts I'd ever had. You wish me one more day. Here. So it's they're going to feel the knees and make a choice which and, is the best they knees. Give, they will give me a number value. <laughs> get this board back, add it up. Sponsors, and, then we'll... and the top three win prizes. All right, the Bonnie <laughs> Knee Competition. <laughs> to feel some knees. They cannot wait. They are at the edge of their seats. They are going to. Okay. Weave through these ladies, mingle, see which knee is the bonniest. The bonny knees. Here comes our first contestant. He puts the knee out there. She goes for a feel. It's a tender feel. It's a tender thing, he says. Bonnie knees. Nothing, nothing above. Nothing above. Looks like she's going below. Oh Lord. Uh huh. This could take all afternoon. <laughs> Going for the grade of material. Gonna check with the judge, see what the number was. And here we go. Judge number two has found the knee. The whole knee. This is the whole knee we're talking about. Yeah. Knees are good for stability. You know, they, they hold you up. You need you need someone that can that can uh, stand tall, stand firm. All right, so the second guy is up there. You know, just think about how many knees you felt in your time. If you haven't felt a knee before, you know you right. need to well, need to think about signing up next time. My knees are killing me. So I'm getting ready to sign off from the uh, from the uh, piping on the green, and uh, you wish you were here. Great fun. The Bookshelf in Tullahoma is the fundraising arm of the Coffee County Literacy Council. Since 1988, the Literacy Council's goal and purpose has been to support and promote adult basic education in Coffee County. We enable individuals to complete their high school equivalency exam, which helps them get better jobs or continue into higher education. The Bookshelf at 114 Southwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma is where we sell used books, which are donated to us by the community. Come see us, bring your books to donate, and join us as you find every genre of books that you can imagine. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been 
in several therapy sessions for knees and back. And that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. Senior Living, active, independent senior living at its finest. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanStem.com. All right, we're back, and I'm glad to have my guy, or not just my guy, but our guy in Telehome <laughs> of, of many, many talents, Mr. Lyle Russell, with Parks and Rec. And, you know, every time Lyle comes, uh, it doesn't make any difference what he talks about. It's always interesting. This guy has so many wonderful directions that, that he can go in. It just amaz you're amazing to me. Well, thank Bob. you. I, I, I feel like I've arrived now. Thank you. you. Have, you've been arrived. You've been arrived. I told, week, I told to Lyle when, when, the opening, when the opening for the director of Parks and Rec came along, I said, don't you dare do that. I said, there, there's, all, <clears throat> there's all kinds of management guys that can do that. There's only one Lyle That's that right. can do all the things you do for the citizens of the city of Tullahoma, from, from ghost stories to birds to, to educate and have fun with our, not just the children, but with our adults as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's on the table today? Well, I stopped by to talk to you all about a couple of programs coming up. You know, April is a very busy month. Um, in Tullahoma, as you just saw, with piping on the green happens in April, and Little League opening day happens in April, and um, so this is a very busy month. If you're if you're not able to find anything to do in Tullahoma, you're not looking because there's something going on. Every you're under a rock. Yeah. That's right. That's, That's right. You're still so, you're still scared of the eclipse. Oh, by the way, yeah. did you participate? In I did. I went outside and looked at it a little bit yesterday. I had yeah. a I have a pair of glasses from the previous year. Um, that I bought specifically for right. eclipses, and uh, yeah, so I went outside and looked around for a little bit. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so, good. So good. It, it was good. We had a lot of folks at the community center that did too. I shared my glasses. So, <laughs> uh, so but yeah, it, it, it was a good time. We enjoyed. Yes, yeah, it. It uh, it's uh, it's funny. You see people walking around with suits with welding helmets on. <laughs> that's what yeah. I have. I have the welding glass that's specifically for that stuff. But yeah, so. But yeah, we enjoyed it. Uh, all of us had a good time. But no, so um, speaking of events in April, we've got two uh, that are coming up that that uh, I want to tell you about today. The first one is obviously our lunch and learn program is is fired back up here third Wednesday of every month. And this month we have a uh, a guest who I happen to know. Um, she was a TEDx speaker at the same time that I was, and so that's where I first met Brittany. And um, she is a, a competitive bodybuilder. Yes. And one of the topics that is very dear to her and the few times I've talked to her about it is, you know, we're in April. So three months ago, obviously, was New Year's and everybody talks about the I'm going to go lose weight and I'm going to work out this year is going to be right. New Year, New Me kind of stuff. And so she said that what's funny is she said by April, almost everybody has given up on that. She said, yeah. you know, you've, oh, I've is. already eaten two pints of ice cream in February. So forget it. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, guilty. 
<laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm good because I give up Brussels sprouts every year. There you go. There you go. Not well, a problem to do without Brussels yeah. sprouts. Well, me. she's going to come do our lunch and learn about re-sparking that that goal um, thought process, even in April after you've given up on your New Year's resolutions. Exactly. And, um, you know, and her story is unbelievable. She's married to uh, John Michael Harris, who yes. is mm -hmm. my, our partner Jerry's son. Oh, okay, I didn't know yeah. that, but okay. So yeah, close connection there. But yeah, so Brittany, um, you know, I, I've talked to her a little bit. She's got a really good story about her journey through this. And John, I think, was going to be part of it, but I don't think he can make it. So yeah. Brittany's going to take it. But I've seen her speak. I know she's really good at it. So she's going to talk about how to turn those fitness goals that you've given up on to start them back up and make them habits. You know, not right. just a, it's not just a goal that you have at New Year's. It's going to be something you do all the time. Right. And uh, I can't think of a better speaker to teach you how to do that because she she knows what she's talking about. Yes, she's really yes she good. does. That's wonderful. So, um, but then, you know, right on the heels of that, uh, we're starting the sign-ups for Tullahoma Tradition. So, Box Derby is coming up on May the 4th. Uh, Star Wars Day is my favorite day, one of my favorite days. So, those sign-ups are going on right now. Um, so, we're going to have those down at CD Stamps. And so, if you want to roll down a hill under the power <laughs> of gravity, and you can fit in a car. That's one of the caveats. You have to fit in the car. But, uh, yeah, so we're doing those sign-ups. That's going to be another big event. Uh, this will be the 23rd Soapbox Derby great, great. in Oklahoma. So, And then right at the end of the month, April doesn't stop there. So right at the end of the month, um, you know, Friday, April 26th is National Arbor Day. Oh, and being good. a city forester, you know, that's a holiday that I, that I pay attention to. So we're going to have our Arbor Day event on the day before. We're going to do it on Thursday the 25th out at the Arboretum. Good. You know, right there at, at East Park where the disc golf course is. And uh, we're going to have a few different folks out there this time. Um, I'm going to be coming with some of my birds uh, to talk about um, the relationship between trees and birds in general. Of course, I have birds of prey, but they use trees too for nesting and so right. on. So uh, we're going to have a demonstration on the proper way to plant a tree. Um, we'll have a couple of other speakers there. The mayor will, of course, give the Arbor Day proclamation. So it's going to be a, a really good event, and we're really excited about, yeah. about celebrating that. I got some new trees planted in the Arboretum, so we're inching closer to that level three designation with 90 different species. So we're getting That's a little closer. Wow. Now, what yeah. about the, we still have the biggest We do, oak. yeah, yeah, the Annie Oak tree. The, yes. the largest willow oak in, so far in the state. Um, we edged out one in Memphis a couple of years ago right. to get that designation. Right. So we're pretty excited about that. That's a cool thing. I've mm -hmm. had to take a few branches off of it. It's you know, it's over 200 years old, so well, it's, it's got to have a little trim that's, down that's there. why you call it the <laughs> Annie Oak Trees, because that's right behind the painted house. It is, that's correct. And, uh, owned by Annie Rome. Yes, correct. And yep. so it's in their back parking lot. If you if you want to look for that, go mm -hmm. go see that tree, because it is just humongous. It is monstrous. It measures a little over 24 feet around at oh chest height. Oh, my goodness. Height. Um, so it's it's a big one, um, and as of right now, it still holds the designation of that's the, great uh, Tennessee, Champion, Tennessee tree Champion Tree for Willow Oaks. Yeah, yeah, it's a good program. So, uh, are you are you a disc golf player? I have tried. I was a pretty decent regular golf player. Okay, uh, but uh, disc golf. I grew up on the beaches in Florida, and we played frisbee. Frisbee is not the same as disc golf. I learned that very quickly. Um, so I am not very good at disc golf, but I try. Well, but, but disc golf brings a lot of people. We don't realize the general population doesn't realize that there's people who play disc golf mm -hmm. that travel well, to come to different disc yeah. golf courses and Tullahoma is a pretty good destination. Isn't it's it? funny that you say that. Um, one, the disc golf association that's out there right now has a really good core group of volunteers and they're all players. They volunteer because they love the game and they're helping us do some cleanup on the course and really trying to make it a, a destination type um, course because we have 27 holes uh, professionally designed and so there's not a lot of cities that have that many. Right. Um, but one of the cool things about that is is that they, they have an app just like on a golf course where you can go on your phone, see how far the holes are and so yeah. on. So they have this app, and when you go on the app to, to get the course layout, you register and it says where you're from. And so in one of the meetings that we had with the Disc Golf Association, they said just in a very short window since they started that app to that meeting, they had people from over 25 different states oh that played goodness. our golf course how in awesome. that time window. 
which was about two or three months, if wow. I remember correctly. That's 25 amazing. cents, that's half of the United States. That's half of the United States, oh, And people that's... from those areas came to Tullahoma to play on our disc golf course. And so it, it's busy out there. I mean, of course, a day like today where it's raining, it's not yeah. so much, but when the weather's nice, there's cars all over the place out there with people playing, and we think it's great. And we think the only thing we've got is bass fishing around here. <laughs> or we the got a disc up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. There's lots of stuff to do around here if you just if you look around. Open your eyes a little bit. And Open you'll your find eyes Open and your find eyes. this yeah. guy because where he is, there There's is cool stuff happening. I'll guarantee you that. Well, I appreciate that. We appreciate we... you. And let let us know when you uh, when you finish this next this next tale of, of uh, ghost. It's not really a oh, ghost yeah. tale, is it? No, this one's so, this for my podcast that I do outside of Parks and Rec. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I've been doing a little bit of research and I didn't realize until I started reading the stories together that Tennessee was the birthplace of a lot of very famous gangsters and outlaws. And so my next podcast episode will be about oh, that's some good. of those colorful characters yeah. in that you want to call it a, a darker area of, of Tennessee history um, that will tell you a little bit about their birthplaces and the crazy things that they did because we are That's we are not short on crazy. No, so, we're not. We've Never got plenty been. of it. So. <laughs> you know, I wrote, a, I, wrote a, I wrote a piece one time called What's a Country Boy, What's a Mountain Boy to Do? Mm -hmm. And it's about that, that lifestyle. And I wrote it after uh, spending some time with a moonshiner. And you know, back in the day, they they made whiskey on a mountain, and then then they started growing pot, then mm -hmm. they started cooking something else. And there's always that whole that whole society of people like that who's who's functioning that way is just follow the current trend of what's popular. Oh yeah, yeah. in that type of thing, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's he. This guy in the piece I wrote ended up in jail because these guys came from the city and uh, bought off, bought off a bunch of land for back taxes because these the mountain people didn't have enough money mm -hmm. to to get their land keep their land and so he you know his granddaddy somebody come do something like that he shoot them oh yeah you know and a daddy the same thing and. Uh, and so he, Mr. Big, came out there one day, and he he took him out. And so he was in the, he was in prison, and his mm -hmm. and his mama was upset, and he just held up his hand, and said, "What's a mountain boy to do?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was protecting he yeah. was protecting his heritage. Right. And uh, it's a it's a kind of a weird piece, but I mean that's that's the culture. Well, y'all have lived here a lot longer than I have, so you probably are more aware of this, but. The amount of unique history that has happened in this little sliver of a state that just used to be part of North Carolina, um, you know, and you've got the three distinct sections, you've got East, Middle, right, and West right. Tennessee, that are so completely different, different, not just in geography, but in culture, culture and, and in politics. Else. Yeah, just the, the whole way across the board, you've got these three distinct areas, and so much stuff happened right here, here. in oh, this yeah. little bitty slot. I've never, I've, I've never experienced in a, pl a place like, quite like Tennessee, where so much has happened in such a short window of time in such a small place. Right. Um, you know, you think about some of the famous trials that have happened here and AEDC's role in uh, the D-Day landing, which is going to be one of our lunch and learn oh, yeah. topics right. coming up pretty soon. Um, you know, you don't think about all of those things happening right here where where we are. Um, and that, you know, that's one of the cool things about Parks and Rec is that we get to explore a lot of that stuff because uh, we, we overlap in a lot of arenas. We're not just going to work out or going to swim or, or going out ball. and eating lunch yeah. or playing Little League. We also get the cool thing of historical sites and history programs and nature education. You know, that's, I'm, I'm not ADD, but I think I might be a little bit because I like to do all of that you stuff. Oh, yeah. I like the swimming, yeah. I like the baseball, I like the fitness, but I also like the history and I like the programs and so that, you know, that's why you're perfect at what you do, Lyle. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, you're irreplaceable. Well, I appreciate that. But. You know, I mean, we're just so fortunate to have somebody like this guy in our town that, yes, that we are. is willing to share himself and his many talents 
with our citizens. And I, we appreciate it every time you come and know that you're always welcome. And uh, just keep those birds flying, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> okay? Absolutely. Anytime. Lyle Russell. Thanks for having Thanks, me. buddy. Appreciate it, John. All right. Thanks Thank you, for Peggy. coming. We'll be back after <laughs> these messages. You. What would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what? I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm -hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. All right, folks, we're back, and me and Miss, me and Miss Peggy McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy. Oh, oh, Peggy, sir. <laughs> What's your middle name? Carol. Carol. I knew that. Peggy Carol. Peggy my Carol. My mother, when my mother said Peggy Carol, I knew I was oh. in trouble. <laughs> John Powell. <laughs> right. Uh-oh. That usually comes along with a belt, the sound of a well, belt coming out of the loops. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks, we've had a great day here today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the information that we've shared with you. Uh, I do appreciate Joel coming over and sharing some insight about our real estate needs and, and what we're going to have to do to get ready for the influx of people. And they're coming. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're I mean, marching he, in. he gave us some great information. Right. I mean, it's amazing to me that that Winchester with 9,000 people has the same amount of stuff going on as we do. Oh, yeah. That with 20,000 people, you know. So we need to get up and get running. And uh, you do the same because there's always something to do in Tullahoma. Be safe, be happy, be kind. We'll see you next time.